Welcome to a uh, fantastic event. And let me say thank you uh, to having uh, myself and my bride of uh, more than 28 years, Marilyn, here with you to share in your special occasion. We really appreciate the opportunity to spend this uh, evening with you uh, in such a special event, recognize those who volunteer their time and resources uh, in support of others. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, our Marines aren't here. I want to thank them for uh, presenting yeah, the color. Up. Thank, you, thank you for the National Anthem. Yeah, great job. Thank you for uh, blessing everybody here. You know, there, there is not a more noble cause uh, than volunteering your services for others. I just wish we could bottle that up a little bit and spread it around this country a little bit more. It normally takes a, uh, a tragedy, some kind of a tragic event to bring each other together. Uh, if we could just do that each and every day, I think this country would be a lot better off. Thanks for asking me to uh, share a few thoughts on uh, such an important and impactful subject, uh, continued service through volunteering. I'll take a few moments here uh, to share some thoughts, and I'd like to start a little bit about telling you about my journey to where I got to today. I'll try not to take too long. I know I'm standing between you and dinner, but I thought I'd share a few uh, of, of uh, my thoughts on this subject because it is a near and dear subject, I think, to everybody in this room, obviously. So Marilyn and I are hillbillies from southern Missouri. <laughs> Any Missourians in here? My grandfather. <laughs> He's dead, though. I'll say I'm a hillbilly. I may not be speaking for her. And, uh, we grew up seven-tenths of a mile apart in a small town named Bismarck, Missouri. And I've known Marilyn since she's in the second grade. My mom was her sixth grade teacher. Uh, I proposed to her the day I left to come on active duty. We got married a few uh, months later, and she's been with me on this journey of service for the past 28 and a half years. I came on active duty in uh, 1988, uh, a long time ago, and I've been serving now for more than uh, 28 years. Uh, I grew up on an airport uh, where both my mother and my father were pilots, uh, civilian pilots, and they taught me a lot back then. I grew up in a small town, small town community where we got together quite often. The kids were out playing late in the evenings, uh, basketball, softball, baseball, all kinds of great things. What my parents taught me was the value of hard work, respect, honesty, service, teamwork, which I think is incredibly important, and leadership. I'll be honest with you, when I went away to college, academically, I was not really prepared for a major university. But what I was prepared for is life. Life because my parents, in my experience, were outside of school, taught me the things that I think carried me through today. Failure. Everybody didn't get a trophy back then. If you came in second place, you were the first loser. I think that taught me a lot about um, dignity and respect for my parents. Uh, and I learned a lot. I, too, wanted to be a pilot, rather, uh, just like my mom and dad. So when I came on active duty in 1988, uh, later attending uh, the weapons school right here at Ellis Air Force Base, uh, I thought, hey, this is going to be a pretty cool career. Uh, I think I'll make it a career. It's 20 years or so. Uh, it took me about 12 years to really join the Air Force, to really understand why I was serving, what it, what it really meant to serve. You know, I, I live by the core values each and every day, but I'm not sure I really knew what they meant, what service to others meant, what excellence in all that you do means each and every day. Um, I learned right after 9-11 when I was responsible for sending somebody's sons and daughters or their moms and dads uh, into combat and understood the responsibility that I had and why I was served. You know, it was no longer about me. Uh, it was about our country and those sons and daughters that I were talking about or somebody's uh, mom and dad uh, that I was responsible for. And I believe strongly uh, that to create an environment of service and volunteerism uh, we must create an environment first where folks feel part of something bigger than themselves. You know, they ought to feel the country first. 
service to the institution that they serve or the city or this organization, but it's no longer about me. I look at some of today's what you would call role models. I'm not sure I classify some of them as role models today because it's really about them too often. It's about how much money are they going to make. It's not about the team and winning. I look back at the history of the Boston Celtics, and that was about a team, or many of the World Series teams. It wasn't about that individual contract and the amount of money they were going to get. What mattered was winning, winning for the team, serving each other. So when I uh, tell you a little story here, when I was first time a, a wing commander at Dias Air Force Base uh, in Abilene, Texas, and on the first few weeks I was there, we had a graduation ceremony for uh, the Airman Leadership School. And at that ceremony, I noticed there were one group with us uh, didn't have any individuals there. There was nobody from that group. So I asked their commander a little bit later, uh, why didn't you have anybody at the Wings Air Airman Leadership School graduation? And that commander told me, well, we didn't have anybody graduate. And I looked at that commander and I said, but we did. I was the wing commander. That commander worked for me. And he looked back at me with this puzzled look and he said, but we didn't. And I said, but we did. He finally caught on that it was more than about him and his group. It was about a bigger calling for the entire wing and all those airmen that were graduate. I also learned later on, a few weeks later, a very tough lesson. We had a young child starved to death on base, believe it or not, 13 month old child. But when we got into the uh, lessons learned from that, what I found is we didn't have that team environment, that camaraderie from the, uh, the folks uh, to take care of each other. As a matter of fact, I held numerous uh, calls after that uh, where spouses and folks would come out of their, uh, their homes to talk. And what we found is people had concern over this house, this family, but nobody was willing to talk. They didn't feel something bigger than themselves. I worked hard to build a team. And I'm glad to say that when I left, I felt like that's what we had. You know, I believe that creating this environment that we talk about, service, is accomplished by talking to talk, more importantly, walking to walk, actually doing what you say, living the lifestyle of service each and every day. You know, folks, I live in a glass house. I have 11,000 people that work for me. Everywhere I go, people pay attention. And if I don't walk the walk, I am setting the culture just by my actions. And so I think our actions of volunteerism and serving create that culture each and every day. It's accomplished through education, communication. You know, there's studies that actually show volunteering not only increases your life satisfaction, but also your health, both physically and mentally. Helping others is good for us spiritually, socially, physically, and mentally. There's no doubt about that. Studies also show when you get those out of balance, that that's when we do tend to have suicidal problems, domestic violence problems. Now, I was told yesterday that uh, we have 22 veterans every day that commit suicide. That's a, a standard number. If we could reach out and educate and communicate and bring them into these types of organizations, I firmly believe that that number would go down dramatically. It can actually help with our veteran and active duty of suicide problem. You know, one star, staff sergeant from the New Jersey Guard said after his uh, mission over in the AOR while he was deployed, uh, when he returned back home, his civilian job just, just didn't cut it. So he started volunteering. That fed his appetite to be so, uh, part of something special, that responsibility. And he's happier every single day, 24-7. You know, I've often been told uh, that I get nothing for it, for my time and effort for volunteering. You know, I believe it's hard to put a value on your health and wellness, your mental, physical, spiritual, and social well-being. That's a story we don't share enough, the value of what comes with what we get to do. So I can promise you I'll talk the talk, and I will walk the walk to continue to create that environment where we inspire not only our airmen, uh, but our veterans, our civilians, to serve a higher calling, to serve each other. You know, there is not a more nobler cause than serving 
each other. And the United States Volunteer Joint Service Command reflects those values that made our nation absolutely what it is today. Organized by Theodore Roosevelt and Leonard Wood with a mission to serve and provide trained and uniformed volunteers who may be called up to render final honors, which you all have done, I'm sure, uh, and fill in the gap where needed for incidents or national emergencies. It's grown to much more than that. I see volunteers each and every day here at Nellis Air Force Base, whether it be at our hospital, whether it be at the Veterans Hospital, whether it be uh, just lending support or reading material, or maybe the most important thing is just lending an ear to somebody in a time of need. So we must continue that great service, that tradition, and also continue to educate and communicate the mission of volunteerism. And I believe there's a lack of understanding of what veterans actually bring to our community. I work each and every day to try to partner with our local organizations, whether it be chambers, whether it be Rotary Clubs, whether it be VFWs, to tell that story. I'll tell you a little story. Uh, when I was a major a long time ago, um, we had a uh, state representative that I reached out to. And I wrote him a letter about um, my concern over my home state of Missouri and the fact that veterans and their families weren't retiring back to Missouri because Missouri, from a uh, tax incentive and those kind of things, actually forced a lot of people out because other states were more conducive to uh, drawing veterans for retirement purposes. And that representative said to me, but how are we going to get money? And I said, well, it's not about money. This is about retaining incredible families who join up to serve and never return to your community who offer so much. Uh, about five years later, I was surprised to see that he was taking credit for a bill through the Missouri Congress for his success at uh, establishing a tax uh, reduction for military retirees in our uh, We have to continue partnering with our local communities uh, to make sure that we continue this mission to serve our military families, uh, the veterans, and of course uh, the entire community. So on behalf of all of you, I just want to say thank you for allowing me to share a few thoughts with you. Thank you for your service, whether you served as an active duty member, whether you're a spouse or a volunteer here. And finally, congratulations to you. I believe you're going to award some awards here a little bit later. Uh, it says a lot about each and every one of you as a person and has a significant and lasting impact on not only many people, but our entire nation. So God bless all of you and God bless our great country. Thank you.